Last week we talked about Samuel and how he received a word from the Lord that confirmed that Eli's two wicked sons would be killed on the same day. After Samuel is established as a prophet in Israel, the Israelites go to war with the Philistines. This is the same nation that they were fighting against when Samson was a judge. So they're still fighting against the Philistines. The army goes out and they are defeated. Um, in chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 3, it says, And when the people came to the camp, the elders of Israel said, why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord here from Shiloh, that it may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. Where is the Ark of the Covenant supposed to be kept? It's supposed to be kept in the most holy place, or the Holy of Holies, in the tabernacle. And when it's out of the tabernacle, for example, when it goes around the walls of Jericho or when it goes through the Jordan River, it is supposed to be covered so that the people cannot see it. And these people say, let's bring it out onto the battlefield so that it can save us. How do you think the people responded? Let's keep reading in verse 4, chapter 4, verse 4. So the people sent to Shiloh and brought from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who was enthroned on the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. So the priest and the Ark of the Covenant come out to the battlefield. And it says, so that the Ark of the Covenant may save them. They've turned the Ark of the Covenant into a, a lucky piece. Like, what are they thinking? Do we have things that we believe bring us luck? Do you have anything that you think brings you luck? Maybe a, a lucky penny or um, certain shoelaces on your shoes when you play a game or um, a lucky shirt or... Do you have something that you put belief in that is not the Lord? That's what these people were doing. How do you think the Lord responded? Do you think this worked out for them? Let's read in chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated, and they fled every man to his home, and there was great slaughter, for 30,000 foot soldiers of Israel fell. And the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. So they were defeated. The ark of the covenant was taken, and Hophni and Phinehas died on the same day, fulfilling the prophecy that Samuel had received. The Lord takes it very seriously that we believe in him and that we trust in him and not trust in things that represent him. Do we sometimes do that? Do we sometimes place our belief in an object that represents the Lord rather than the Lord himself? Do we put our belief in saying the right kind of prayers instead of putting our trust in the Lord who answers them? Do we put our trust in being a good person, that that will save us? Or maybe the, do we believe that church will save us? The only thing that can save us is the Lord. We have to put our trust in Him and Him alone. So, the Philistines have, have taken the ark. And this is a funny story. Um, they take the ark and they put it in their temple, the temp and uh, their idol that they worship, the god that they worship is named Dagon. And he is like a, a man with a fish tail, kind of like a, a merman, and that is their idol that they worship. And so they take the ark of the covenant of the Lord and put it in the temple of Dagon, 
and Dagon keeps falling over. Um, it says that even he falls over one time and his uh, arms and head fall off. And so the Philistines are like, we, we need to move an ark. And so they move it somewhere else, and all the people there are um, afflicted. Um, so they have some kind of sickness or um, things going wrong. Uh, they have tumors. And so they move it again, and there are more sickness and more tumors. And the Philistines are finally like, we need to get rid of this. We, we can't have this among us. This, this God that this represents is too strong for us. So they decide that they're going to send it back to the Israelites. But first they want to make sure that they um, honor the Lord that, that this, this ark represents. And so they make um, golden tumors and, and mice that are made out of gold, and they put it in a box um, to give to the Lord. And then they put the ark of the covenant on this cart and have two uh, female cows uh, pull the cart away, and they say, if the cart goes directly back to Israel, we will know that it's the Lord who has done this. But if the cart goes somewhere else, we'll know that it's just coincidence that all these things happen where the ark is. Well, off go the, the cows and the cart, and they go directly back to Israel because the Lord is the one that is doing all of this with his ark. And so there are the people, the uh the town that the ark goes back to is a Levite town, which means that the people that live there are priests. And so they are out and they are harvesting grain and they look over and there's a cart with the Ark of the Covenant trotting into their town. And so they are so excited about it and they go and they um, break up the cart and uh, build a fire with the wood and then they uh, kill the cows and they offer them as a sacrifice to the Lord. Um, and they are so grateful that the ark has been brought back to Israel. It's kind of an interesting story, and there are some things that we can learn about it. Um, the Lord is the one who brought the ark back to his people. The people didn't go get it. They didn't have the power to. They couldn't go get it. They were defeated. But the Lord brought his ark back to his people. The Lord is the one who defeated the Philistines. The ark didn't defeat the Philistines. The army didn't defeat the Philistines. The Lord did. The Lord is the one that's acting in this story. The ark at that time represented um, that the Lord was with his people, that he lived among them. Um, now we have the Holy Spirit that lives in us. We are, what is in us is the symbol that the Lord is with us. He is with us always. Do we honor that? The people got in trouble because they didn't honor the ark that just represented that the Lord was with them. Do we represent, or do we honor the Holy Spirit that lives in us? Do we honor the Lord with everything that we do? I think sometimes we take it for granted what the Holy Spirit does in our lives or what he could do in our lives if we if we believed and allowed him to do it. I think sometimes we pray about what we want instead of seeking what the Lord wants. So the, the Israelite army says, we want to win, so let's bring the ark and, and, and make that happen. Sometimes we pray and say, and the Lord will answer our prayer because that's what we want to happen. Do we seek the Lord's will? Do we seek what he wants more than what we want? I hope so. And I pray that, that we more and more do that. Also, the Lord was working behind the scenes. The Israelites had kind of kept living and the, the ark was away from them. And it said it was... For a, for a long time, the ark was was gone from them. And they didn't know what was going on in the, the land of the Philistines. They didn't know that the Lord was working to bring his ark back to them. Sometimes we pray and we want an answer right then. And when we, when we get an answer later, or maybe when we're still waiting on an answer, we think, the Lord isn't 
He is at answering my prayers. Let's trust that the Lord is working. He's working in, in a way that we can't see, and He's working in our lives in a powerful way. Thank you. Could they have even imagined that the ark would just come trotting back into their town on its own? No. When we pray, let's trust in the Lord that He is working, that He is bringing His will in our lives. And also, the Lord is the one who brought the ark back. The Lord is the one that defeated the Philistines. The Lord is working in us and through us. The Lord will fight for us. We need only to be still.